morning guys um welcome back to my channel and if you're new welcome today we are going to make a pair of slippers but using only the 32 uh centro needle machine the slipper is made in two parts the toe the body and you can customize it whichever way you want it with colors and yarn um to make it look whatever you want i mean i find that these slippers remind me almost like converse style or sneakers so i mean it's up to you how you wanna um how you wanna customize it i'm gonna use dk yarn i'm gonna use two colors this uh i would say pink almost watermelon it's called coral Coral DK yarn from um, Crafty Things. Again, I got this out of Umbargans in the UK. Lovely yarn and nice and cheap. That, that also helps. And then still in Home Bargains, there were uh, these pack of three of DK yarn from Sarah Ashford. They're very soft, very nice. And this is shade pink. And it has these effects of colors in it. So we are going to use those. And let's start with the toe. So you need to obviously cast on. And the cast on that we're using for the toe is the cinch cast on. So let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. So to cast on, you leave a little bit of a tail, not, it's not necessary to have too much, just a little bit. And you start from the needle that is a different color from the rest. On this machine, this is actually your first needle. So on the machines here, you have the numbers. This is signed as number one. On other machine, usually this is the last one. Of the row so if you're using a 48 that would be 1048 you do whatever you're used to doing but if you're new to the craft i would advise you to always consider this as number one it's easier to remember and easier to spot also you will notice on my machine but many other crafters do the same that we paint these bumpers um that are next to this pin that will allow us to see when it's coming by because obviously you, otherwise you would not see it until it rises so to cast on you loop around the first peg like this then you go behind the next one and then in front of the third and behind the fourth front and behind and the front and behind all around the tension doesn't need to be too tight And remember, you always need to end at the back of your last peg before starting the new row. This is not considered a row. This is just the foundation. So at this point, you will reset your counter. Make sure that your yarn is fed through the yarn feeder and that you have... Um, Put it into the tensioner if you have a tensioner. I'm using the tight tension on this machine. Give yourself a little bit of slack on the, on the yarn. And we are ready to go. We are going to crank. 20 rows.
Okay. I'm done with my 20 rows. Now you grab your needle. You grab your scissors. You cut your yarn. Um, make sure that you have enough tail to because we need to start casting off by picking up all the stitches so you need to have enough tail to allow you to do that um a rule of thumb if you really don't know how to gauge it because with experience then you almost can tell but rule of thumb if you can go around once around the barrel of your machine and just leave a little bit for you then you're good to go you will see that this will end up being a little bit too much anyway but at least you are safe that it will be enough so to cast off you knit your first needle and then you need to have live stitches once you've knitted the last needle and you start cranking without the working yarn the stitches on the right side of the yarn feeder will become live so at this point you have two options the safer one is picking up the stitches from this side once the needle goes down and the reason why this is the safe option is because you only have you can only have um a couple of live stitches at a time depending on how much you're cranking your wheel and that will allow you not to lose any other stitches behind that so i wanna so i'm cranking to get two stitches live and I know that the other one is being secured because the, the needle is still up, so it's not going anywhere. This is a little bit longer to do, but it's safer. So if you're not, um, if you're new to this machine, then I would advise you to just take your time and do this. Otherwise, you can just crank a whole run, a whole turn of the, the barrel and now you have all live stitches and the tricky part with this is that picking one if you're not careful you might drop the next one but this can be a quicker option because then you can quicker go through and pick um more stitches at a time when i first started i rather picked them up from this side like two at a time three at a time because i kept dropping them you have this is the tool part I'm just gonna stretch the the wee project cinch one end when you cinch the end see if I can maybe I hope you can see it um so when you cinch the end it will curl on you so make sure that you straighten out 
in order to not have it bunched up and pull on the yarn. You can then go through a couple of stitches again just to secure it in place. And close that wee small hole. Okay. See what I mean with you will have a lot of yarn left at the end of it. But again, at least we are sure that this is the there will be enough as a length. So I cut a little bit off. Now you're gonna cinch the other side, still being careful that doesn't curl up on you. And basically what we are making here is it's like a scrubby. So we're gonna cinch both ends, connect the two um cinched part together like you would do with a hat but you would spread the sides out to make a disc And just tie a knot together. Put the other yarn, and we can now hide the tails because we don't need them anymore. And you can just hide them inside the two layers. So this is what you need to have as the first part of the project. Stretch it out a little bit. One part done. Okay, now for the body of the slipper. What we need to do is um, we need to use waste yarn. We will be creating a tube, but we will need to close it flat on the ends. And to do so, we will need waste yarn. So we will cast on as we did before, but using a different color of yarn that's contrasting with the main color that you will be using. So we said that I'm going to use this for the body, and I'm going to use this color as a waste yarn but i will also be using this color here that was the color that we used for the toe just because it's contrasting to um use it as a wee hack in order to remove quickly the waste yarn from the project i showed this already in another video but we'll show it uh, again here so let's start Casting on. Now, for waste yarn, I have already my wee balls made and I just used the entire um, amount of yarn, but if you are using waste yarn out of a ball of yarn that you don't want to waste, um, I would advise you to use to do at least five rows of waste yarn. 
so it's between five or ten, whatever you're comfortable with. Don't do any less than five because it's just um, it's it's a little bit more trickier to work with. But again, I will use the the wee ball that I have here. Now, if like me, you're using a wee ball, the only thing that you need to do is to pay attention of when you're getting to the end of it, because obviously you need to finish at your first needle. Now, this is the moment of the hack. So grab your third color of yarn that's contrast contrasting from everything else. You put it where you finished with the waist yarn. And you do one round. But do not close the circle, meaning that you're finishing on the peg that sits before your starting one. So you started on the white and you're finishing on the pink. So the two yarn will sit one next to another in between. If you were to close the circle, you would have knitted the white one as well. So make sure you don't close the circle. That's done. Now you can reset your counter. Grab your working yarn. Leave a little bit of a tail because we will need to then obviously sew things together. At the same time, don't worry too much in case you haven't left enough because you can still sew things together by using the yarn from the ball. So, as mentioned before, we are cranking now 70, 70, 70 rows.
Okay, so now what we're going to do is, to start, you will have all your tails inside the tube, so take those out. Stretch it gently. Now we need to close the ends flat. So let's start with this one. Okay, so first of all, you need to rotate your tube if, if it's not already um, put folded in half, in, in the correct half. So you might want to twist it a little bit. You want to have your tails to your left. That because I'm closing it from right to left. So your tails needs to be on the opposite side of your starting point. And you need to check your stitches to start pinpointing which ones are the first two on this side. To help you with that, you can use stitch markers. So in this case, I have, I will need to take the pink yarn as a reference, as this was, like if it was the waist yarn itself. And I have this coming out from this stitch here. And it's the same stitch that my working yarn is coming out from. So that for me would be my first stitch. On this side and above it again I need to look for that stitch where the waist yarn is coming out and it's this one the reason why you're doing this is because once you start braiding the stitches together you will pull on the yarn and these two will well they could be so tight that you might miss them and if you miss them and you close your project that will end up in a drop stitch so once you've done that just make sure that every stitch on one side is facing the other on the opposite side and you can even count them so we are having a 32 needle machine that means you should have 16 stitches on one side and 16 stitches on the other Perfect. So my 16th stitch on this side is this one and therefore I'm going to start with these two. Grab your crochet hook. I usually have always a medium size of crochet hook. You can use a thicker one, you can use a smaller one. Um, whatever you're comfortable with, I believe this would have been like a, a 4.5, between a 4 and a 4.5. To close flat, you grab the first stitch that's close to you, and then you grab the one that's literally above it you pull the one above it through the stitch that was close to you and that was your first closure 
then you grab again the one that was close to you the next one that's closer to you and you pull it through and then you go on the top one and you pull it through and you alternate let's say this is the bottom bot bottom facing me closer to me and this is the top one you go down and above and what you're doing is braiding close the stitches Take your time make sure you don't split the yarn in the process otherwise you will create resistance and it will make things difficult another tip for very beginners is to hold your project like this well at least this worked for me so i have my index finger inside the tube and I pinch one end with my thumb and my index and the other side with my index and my middle finger. And this helps not to um, pull too much on the yarn in order for the other stitches not to get tighter. Just a little bit of pressure and that's all you need. And we are at the last two. So in this case, they, they remained pretty visible. But nonetheless, it's a good habit. So I would advise you to... Make it a habit, if you can. So once you are at the very last stitch, in order to close it, to finish it off and close it off, you grab your tail, you yarn over your hook and pull through the last loop. That creates a wee knot. Now you can remove your stitch markers. And now we can actually remove also the waist yarn. Now, what we are going to do is pretty much pulling on the pink yarn in order to release it. But before I do that, I like to release a couple of stitches at the very beginning. Just because that's the part where it gets all tied up with the other tails. And you pull. Your best bet is to hold it here because that's it's where it's gonna have the most resistance because it's gonna bunch up so this is a yarn out and then all you need to do is remove your waist yarn and you're you're removing the the whole lot without having to unravel it so you can do that later and this is one side done just make sure check it that we haven't dropped anything now if we did drop something it would be an easy fix um because you're gonna pick up the stitch and you would use your yarn to secure it so you would feed the yarn back inside until you reach the drop stitch 
and you pick it up from there. But not having to do it is better. So now you need to straighten your tube the best way possible because you don't want it twisted. So follow your sides. And those should then match what you have here. So your first and last stitch here should just be aligned with this side. Take away this peg. Once again, pinpoint your first and last. And you repeat. Once again, release a couple of stitches of your um, pink yarn here. Just to make it easier. Grab your end and start pulling now what you don't want to do is pull too much that you snap your yarn so obviously you need to feel the yarn if it start um resisting too much then release it, uh, maybe pull on the other side, like I did. Because at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's, it's fabric, it's material, so the fibers will get knotted together to work with it. And here you have it. You tighten your knot, check for any drop stitches that we do not have. And this is where we are now. So we have closed flat and, re and removed the, the waist yarn. What we need to do now is you fold that in half. And we're going to 
mattress stitch together this edge here, this side here. Either side works, it's fine, but obviously I'm gonna take advantage of one of the tails to allow me to close that. If you're unsure if your tail is long enough, um, if it measures the length that you need to sew together and a little bit, even one and a half, that's more than enough for a mattress stitch. Here I have plenty, here I have like four times the length, so no worries there. So let's get ready for the mattress stitch. So grab your yarn, feed it through your needle, get the other tail out of the way because you don't want to accidentally sew it together. So what we are going to do with the mattress stitch and how we um, close with a mattress stitch. First of all, you need to obviously line up the project, the two sides, and find the two uh, rows that are going the same direction. So. Okay, if I stretch, you can see. So you see the stitches will create a V shape. And what you want is that one side and the other are the V shapes, the stitches are going the same direction. So in my case, the point, it's towards the right with me looking at it. I don't care which way they go as long as both sides are going the same way. Now, what you want to do is, first of all, connect the two sides, the two corners together, and then you're now on the opposite side of where you started. Go back and on this, on this row here, you start going inside the stitch and grab two bars. Then you go on the opposite side. at the very top and you grab two bars. And you keep going. So you're picking two bars from one side and then you're going on the opposite side back into the stitch where you came out beforehand and grab another two bars. I'm going to show you this on another... Um, on another tube with a different color, so you might be able to see it better. So this is to try and show you better what we are doing with the actual project. 
So you have the tube that's folded in half and the two sides um, facing each other. So you're going to grab the top row on each side, making sure that the stitches are facing the same direction. So we said that every stitch has a V shape. Check to see where the point of that V is facing. In my case, they're facing right. My right. So I'm using a very different color of yarn, hoping that this will allow you to see even better what is happening. So assuming that this yarn is com coming out as a tail from your project, you're connecting the two ends. So I'm now on my top row coming out. I go back onto the row closer to me. And I grab the first two bars of the first two stitches. Now that you are on the bottom edge, you're grabbing your needle and go on the first two stitches above and grab the two bars inside. Now that you have your macro stitch uh, started you go and search for this stitch where the yarn is coming out so you see here this is where my pink yarn is coming out i go back inside there and grab the next two bars going from right to left Same thing, now that I'm on the bottom side, I need to go on the top. Search for that stitch where the pink yarn is coming out. Go inside and grab two bars. And this is what is happening. So if you notice, you're looping the yarn across one another, but they are creating little beads. So they're replicating this stitch. Um, your knitting stitch. So you alternate sides. You grab two stitches from the top, two stitches from the bottom, and always go inside the stitch that you came out from. Make sense? If you miss this step, if you don't go back inside the same stitch you came out from and you go the other one, so you just pick the following two, leaving one stitch behind, this will create a hole. And once you stretch your work, you can see the hole. So make sure that you're always going back in where you came out from. Once you are at the very end, you pull and this will close shut your edge. And the good thing of the mattress stitch is that you can actually use different color, any color of yarn because you will not see it. You're only seeing it here just because the way I connected it with the other side. But this is just to show you what we did 
what we need to do on the actual project. But otherwise, here you have it. So I hope this was clear. Let's get back to the project. <laughs> Once you reach the corner here, the, the, the part where it's folded, obviously you're pretty much on the same row. So start, I mean, don't worry too much now where you are. Just grab the bars as much as you can. And then you just pull together. This is so satisfying. And here you have it. You can't even tell. So you pull it and you stretch it a little bit just to make it uh, even all across. And then just put a wee knot inside. Hide your tail. And this step is done. Okay, so we are back with the actual project. What we need to do is this. I have um, hidden all the tails that I had still left attached. Now you grab what we made at the start, so the disc. And the way I do it is, is this. So I lay the tube flat like this. And I put together the two ends and I just hold them in place for a little while with a stitch marker. And what we need to do is we need to connect the disc, the toe, to the rest of the body. Okay. So you can do it whichever way you want. You can even start from the bottom and then follow along. I don't know why, I just find it easier to start from one end and do the entire circle. And the way we are gonna do this is you're gonna take Whichever yarn, so it's either the yarn from the body of um, your slipper or the yarn from the toe, either or works. I'll grab the one from the body.
So the way you want to do it is this. You want to grab a stitch from the body. So you're, you're not grabbing the edge that you close together, but you're grabbing the last available stitch. That's this one. You thread through. And here you grab a stitch, trying to keep yourself on the edge. It might not always be super precise, but just follow the shape of your toe, of the toe part. And start threading it together. Then once you grabbed a stitch from the bottom, you go back up and you grab another stitch from the top. And then you grab another stitch from the bottom. And you keep going. Another thing that you need to also remember is this, that when you do this kind of stitching here, is you're looking at the right side out. Because inside what you're going to have is the edge of the part that you close flat inside. So you don't want this on the outside of your slipper. The reason why I'm pointing this out is if your tube has maybe a wee snag or maybe there is something not quite perfect that you wish to have it on the inside, this is the moment that you need to then make sure that you're connecting the two parts in the right way. So let's say that this is the side that I have a, a defect and I want this on the inside. I will have to Turn this inside out, I have the defect inside and sew this together. I hope that makes sense.
So we've done the the rounds. We will need to secure the ends, obviously, but I just cut the um, excess of yarn, and this is what you should have. You should always be able to almost close the round. I mean, in actual fact, you did close the round because now we're gonna just connect the two uh, corners together and hide the tails inside your project. Just stretch it a little bit. So we are almost done. What we need to do now is the finishing touches. Um, for who of you that is following me already, again, thank you for that. You know that I like to have a wee crochet border around this. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it. And then we are going to make a couple of loops in order to thread what we would call the lace. It. Um, I was hoping to actually use uh, a ribbon, but the ones that I had, I didn't like the colors. But the idea at the beginning was to actually have something a little bit more shabby like this. So if you are a crafter like me that dabbles in all sorts of craft, you might have some sort of ribbon slash fabric, a little bit shabby chicky. Um, they can use that was the idea at the beginning but again the color doesn't doesn't really match the vibe so we are doing it the normal <laughs> my normal way so grab your hooks and grab your yarn again i like to have contrasting colors so i still obviously use the yarns that we use for the project but I will do the border in the pink one, in the pink yarn. Okay, so the border will be just a, a single crochet. Um, I have checked for myself a few videos on the basics of crocheting. Um, just because obviously as soon as I keep showing you this I might as well showing you the right way and on every video that I've seen so far everybody is saying that the correct way to start your project is 
always with a slip stitch unless you're doing something specific that requires another kind of um starting point but in my case but what you will do you will need to do a slip stitch around your hook so in order to do a slip stitch you wrap the yarn around your two fingers and you pull it across I hope you've seen it so you wrap the round you, you wrap the yarn around the two fingers you create an X like this you go underneath the yarn that sits on your index finger you pull that loose end creating a loop don't pull it all the way through just create the loop around your hook hold the two ends here and pull that creates the knot then you grab the tail end and you pull and that will create the loop around your hook make sure that is tight enough not to just fall off your hook but loose enough that allows the hook to go through it easily okay so once you have this from the inside you grab your first stitch So you have the tail this is where we are so i have my crochet hook with the loop the starting loop of the yarn that i will use to do the border and then i insert the hook through the first stitch and i'm trying my best to follow the top edge row all around now i'm gonna yarn over so this is a terminology that indicates the loose end of the yarn that comes out of the ball to be wrapped around the hook and pull through and pull through again that's your starting point now i'm gonna go inside the second stitch yarn over meaning that the yarn is going over the hook and then with the hook i'm gonna pull through that yarn now that i have two loops on my hook i'm gonna yarn over again and pull through the two loops okay once again you're always starting with one loop on your hook you go inside the stitch yarn over pull through you have now two stitch two loops around your hook yarn over again and pull through the two stitches you're gonna do this all the way around and then we can catch up together at the end and see how we can connect the two to close the the circle
Okay, so I'm getting to the end. Well, I, I am at the end. But we just need to connect the two sides together. So I'm going to go back in the same stitch I used before. And then I'm going to go inside the first stitch that I made as a border. But in this case, instead of doing a single crochet that is what we did so far i'm gonna do a slip stitch a slip stitch is nothing else but the loop the second loop that now you have on your hook this one will go inside the other loop okay yarn over once more cut the yarn Pull it through, that creates a wee knot that secures everything in place. Now what you need to do is just tidy up your yarn. Okay guys, so this is me with a voiceover. I don't know what happened, but um, the, the audio just cut off. So now we need to start making the loops, six loops, in order to have the string um, weaved through it. So what I'm doing here is I'm marking with stitch markers where I want the loops. I'm eyeballing it, so there is no precise measure. Uh, but what you want to do is make sure that you have the loops opposite to each other, obviously positioned at the same uh, level. And also you need to allow enough space for your foot to enter the slipper. So once you have gauged that, you will have three loops in each side of the slipper. So those will be evenly spaced, but again, you need to eyeball it. Uh, once you've made the first slipper, it will be then easier to replicate onto the second because you would just overlap it and then um, replicate the spots where you actually are positioning the loops. So this is what I'm doing now. I'm just eyeballing it. Here I just thought that I was not um, having enough space for the, the foot to enter the slipper although it's stretchy but still and then i'm gonna put the middle one now that's almost centered Okay, now that we are um, done with the stitch markers, we know where to uh, position the, the loops. The way we are going to do the loops is by doing a chain. And we are going to do the loops made of five chains each. 
So again, slip knot. I'm using a crochet hook, and this is my usual crochet hook. The the size of it, it's I think four and a half, between four and four and a half. Um, that's the size that I'm more comfortable with. So I'm doing this uh, slip knot around my crochet hook. I am now going through the top stitch. So it's the stitch that belongs to the border. You yarn over, make sure that the wee tail is out of the way. Yarn over, pull through, and this is a slip stitch that we're making. This will create the anchor, the foundation for your chain. So now you need to chain five. So yarn over and pull through, that's one. Yarn over and pull through, that's two. Yarn over and pull through until you reached five. Now you're gonna um, fold it on itself and go back inside the same stitch that you used. Yarn over, pull through, and this is a slip stitch. So we're gonna pull that yarn through everything because we need to pretty much tie it closed. I know my thumb is in the way, but I hope you can see it. And at this point, you yarn over once more. So you cut your yarn and then you need to create a, a, a knot to secure it. So I'm cutting the yarn, I'm yarning over, pull through, pull through everything and that's a knot. And that's your first loop. So now you tidy up the, the ends, create another knot and hide the tails. And you will need to do this for all the stitches that you marked. So in total you will have six loops.
Okay, so the loops are done. Now let's uh, put aside the project for a second. We need to make the lace. Uh, once again, I'm using um, the contrasting yarn. So we made the border and the loops with pink. Now we make the lace with the white yarn with the flex of colors. Just to create a little bit of contrast. Now, in order to do the lace, I will just do a long chain. So how long is a long chain? Uh, eyeball it. I did not count the chains because I keep losing count. Um, and I'm not really measuring it as such. So I'll do it as long as I think it's long enough. And then if I need to cut off a bit, I can. So it's better to do it longer than shorter. So to do the chain, Again, you start with a slip knot around your um, crochet hook, as we did so far. Then you yarn over and pull through. That's your first chain. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. So every time you're pulling through that yarn, that's a chain. Keep going. Keep going until you think it's long enough. Now that you have your lace done, you're happy with the measurements, um, you need to fold it in half. So cut all the yarns, tidy up the tails, fold it in half. So you have equal length on each side. And you start from, grab your, grab your slipper back, start from the bottom. So start from the two loops closer to the toe. And you will start feeding the lace inside the, um, the loops. So you're going to start from the outside in. The two loops. Then you cross the lace. And then you start feeding. You start feeding the lace from the inside out. Of the remaining loops. So you will see it now coming up. Once you're done, adjust it in length, tighten it a little bit, tie a knot, put a bow on it, and job done. Now, if you realize that uh, maybe your lace is too long or it just your personal taste that you want it shorter, the way to do it, as I'm showing you here, is just to tie a knot where you want it to stop, tight that knot very, very tight, 
and cut the remaining of that tail. Once that is done, just pluck away whatever loose yarn you have, trim it, and that's it. That's how you shorten the length of the lace in case it's too long. But again, you cannot add to it if it's too short. So here is the finished product. I think they are extremely cute and yeah, I mean, I don't know, they, they remind me a little bit of maybe even the bowling shoes, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, um, you might see on this, um, in my project that there is a difference between the one that we did together and the one that I did as a trial run. And the difference is that I was, I made a mistake when I added the toe part to the body. As you can see on the left one, I started from the back, from the center on the back end, and I must have missed some stitches. I'm, I must have done something wrong because I wasn't able to fully close the circle. Bear in mind, you are doing the tube and you're doing the toe part all from the 32 needle machine you have the same amount of stitches on one side and the other so you should be able to close the circle like on the one that we did together um so yeah just keep that in mind and i think that uh closing it and and sewing it together the way we did it together uh prevents that mistake from happening so I might have to redo that one on, off camera just to get the correct uh, pair. But uh, here you have it. Despite the, the mistake there, I think it's they're stinking cute. I hope you liked it. And uh, that's another project for our loved 32 pin mushroom machine. So there you have it. This is the finished product and uh, thank you so much for making it this far. Once again, if you haven't subscribed already to my channel, please do so. It will make me extremely happy, but obviously it will also massively help my channel to grow. Um, I'm really committed to that, so I need your help in order to achieve that goal. Thank you again for your time. Thank you for being with me and have a good rest of the day. Um, and if you liked it, thumbs up. And if you have any advice, suggestions, feedbacks, please leave a comment below. I'll do always my best to read them all and respond to all. Thank you again. Bye.